God bless you, my beloved. Thank you for joining us once again this week. We are Abundant Grace Church. I'm Bishop Ramon Di Maria, and I'm the senior pastor of the church. If you're watching this on YouTube, please like us and subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much. Today, we will be in part two of our message series titled, Death is Certain. Our main verse is from Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 6 which reads as follows from the King James Version, Also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished, neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. As I said last week, my beloved, no matter how much wisdom, wealth, property, or gains that we achieve in this life, we are going to face death one day, and we're going to leave everything behind. That is, unless the rapture of the church takes place, according to the Word of God in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 51 and 52, and 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 16. My beloved, only Jesus Christ can rescue us as Christians from physical death, and that is only through the rapture. Today we will open up with part 2 from Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 2, which reads from the English Standard Version, It is the same for all, since the same event happens to the righteous and the wicked, to the good and the evil, to the clean and the unclean, to him who sacrifices and him who does not sacrifice. As the good one is, so is the sinner, and he who swears is as he who shuns an oath. So my beloved, there is no difference in the treatment of persons. All people of every discrimination, apparently, in the distribution of good and evil, must die, as I said, unless the rapture takes place. Sun and shade, client and storm, fruitful and unfruitful seasons, joy and sorrow are dispensed by mysterious laws, the laws of God that we don't fully understand. All men have the same lot in life, my beloved, whether it be death or any other contingency, without regard to their gentle or pleasant situation. The classes into which men are divided must be noted here, righteous and wicked, or unrighteous. Refer to men in their conduct to others. The good and clean are those who are not only ceremonially pure, but as the characteristic good shows, are morally undefiled. So, as we see, in this life, there is only good and evil, clean, unclean, righteous, and unrighteous. To him who sacrifices, which means the man who attends to externals of religion, offers the obligatory sacrifices and brings his free will offerings. The good and the sinner in the widest senses. It's like the widest sense would be like who are different from day and night. He who swears and one who shuns his oath. He takes an oath lightly, carelessly, and falsely, and is contrasted with him who regards it as a holy thing, or shrinks in awe from invoking God's name in such a case. He is cowardly and will not stand up for truth in fear of saying the wrong thing when asked to swear to a certain circumstance. My beloved, we have people like that in the church today who will not stand for the Word of God, who will not stand for the truth, who will not stand for righteousness because they're afraid that they're going to offend some person. Well, what about offending God? What about offending Jesus Christ who went to the cross to die for the sins of all mankind? What about that? Is that not more important than just offending a friend or offending a group or a class of people? In my book, it is. I will stand for righteousness sake. I will stand for God no matter what. What's wrong is wrong. What's right is right. What's day is day. What's night is night. What's good is good. What's evil is evil. There is no other way. The five contrasted pairs are the righteous and the wicked, the clean and the unclean, the sacrificer and the non-sacrificer, the good and the sinner, the profane swearer, and the man who reverences an oath. There are some people that won't take an oath because they don't want to be bound to something that is true. There are some that would take an oath for evil and love it. My beloved, 
There is only one way to heaven, and that is through the cross of Jesus Christ. That's it. In order to get to heaven, you must be a believer in Jesus Christ. You must believe that he is the Messiah, the Savior, that he was born, crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and ascended into heaven. This guy sitting at the right hand of God the Father. If you don't believe this, then you are not a Christian. You are not a believer in Jesus Christ. And therefore, you have not salvation. And when you die, you will go to torment and then to the lake of fire. Period. But if you do believe this and you stand on this, well then my beloved, you will go to paradise and then to heaven when you leave this life. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 3 reads, This is an evil in all that is done under the sun, that the same event happens to all. Also the hearts of the children of man are full of evil, and madness is in their hearts while they live, and after that they go to the dead. I grew up. We are born in sin and shaped in inequity. We are born in the flesh, and unless we are changed by the blood of Jesus Christ, by his sacrifice on Calvary, we have no hope in going to heaven. There is an evil in all that is done under the sun. That same event happens to all. A very great evil, a very sore one. The worst of evils, not an evil as the providence of God is concerned with, who does no evil, nor is there any unrighteousness in him. He is righteous in all his ways, but there is an evil, a distressing thing to the minds of good men, and is what bad men make of ill use of, to harden themselves in sin, and to despise religion as an unprofitable thing. Christians are laughed at, they're mocked, especially in this present time. Look, everyone's coming against Christianity, and that's the way it's been for years. We are a minority, but yet we are a majority, and we will be a majority in heaven because no evil thing will be able to go to heaven yet alone dwell in heaven, the evil perish and go to torment and then the lake of fire. But the righteous, those that are Christians, those that believe in Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord, they go to paradise and then they go to heaven. You see, there's going to be a judgment. It's called the great white throne judgment. And the righteous will hear our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ say to the Father, I know him. Enter in to my rest. Enter in. To the pearly gates of heaven, as I say. But the unrighteous, the evil, and the filthy, Jesus Christ will say, Depart from me, I never knew you, you worker of inequity. Now, which one do you want to hear? Come on in, my good and faithful servant, or depart from me into the lake of fire, you evildoer? Which one do you want to hear? Also, the hearts of the children of man are full of evil. They are naturally full of evil, of all unrighteousness and wickedness. So what comes out of them? Show it. And because the same things happen to the good and bad, and the wicked pass with impunity, except from punishment. They might get away with it in this life, with lying, murder, deceit, but they will not get away from the judgment of Jesus Christ towards sinners. See, my beloved, people are happy in sin. A lot of people enjoy sin. A lot of people enjoy hurting people doing evil against people, putting people down so they can look big. But one day that will end. Their evil will be judged, and it will be condemned to hell for all eternity. You see, madness is in their hearts while they live. Every sin is madness. Every sin is disobedience to God, especially when they know better, that they know there is a God, and they know that they will face Him one day. Everybody in America knows that there is a God, but they refuse to to accept that he is a judge that will judge them guilty and send them to hell. I've heard every excuse in the book. Oh, I don't believe a, a, a good God would send anybody to hell. Well, you choose to go to hell. And he just compliments your wish by saying, go where you want to go. Go to hell with Satan, his demons, and the most evil and vile people on the face of the earth. My beloved, some people think they could out win God that they can have their own way, that they can defeat God, that they can defeat death, but they can't. Crazy people run into destruction, and they care nothing about it. There are people that expose themselves to dangers. They're called daredevils. 
not thinking that they're going to die. And if they do die, oh well, they just die and they just, they're not existent. That's not true. The minute that they die or waste their life, they go and face God. And he says, to torment. Or he will say, if you were righteous, go to paradise and wait for the great white throne judgment. Wicked men are made about their lust and made against the saints. And all that is good. This insanity is in their hearts and shows itself in their lives and continues with them as long as they live, unless they come to Jesus Christ and take advantage of his grace and repent. After that, they go to the dead. So let's see about that. My beloved, after all the madness of their lives, they die and go to the state of the dead and are among those which have their bodies buried, burnt, or whatever. No matter what happens to your body, your soul lives forever. If you were unrighteous, it goes to torment and then to the lake of fire. If you were righteous, it goes to paradise and then up to heaven. Proverbs 2 and 18 says, For their house sinks down to death, and their paths to the departed they go. Their house is their body, their shell. It dies, and their path is to torment. Ecclesiastes is a good book to read if you want to know about life. If you don't want to know about life and what is to come, just don't read it. You may want to read the book of Revelation. It tells you what's going to happen. It tells you about the judgment. It tells you about what happens to the righteous and also what happens to the unrighteous. My beloved, where do you want to spend eternity? That's where we're going to stop today. Next week we will pick up with Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 4. But I cannot close this message without asking you to receive Christ as your Savior and Lord. My beloved, God has a plan for your life. He wants you to be with him forever. And in order to do that, you must receive his Son, Jesus Christ, as your Savior and Lord. And if you want to do that today, you must believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior. And only through him can you go to heaven. That he was born, crucified, died, buried, rose from dead on the third day, and ascended into heaven as God sitting at the right hand of God the Father. And from that position, he will come to judge the dead and the living. Now, if you want to receive that today, I want to lead you in a prayer. And I pray that you don't let this day go by without receiving Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. Won't you pray this prayer with me and be assured that you will go to heaven when you die? Because surely you will die unless the rapture takes place. And if the rapture takes place and you are a Christian, you go to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. If the rapture takes place and you're not a Christian, you will be here for the tribulation. And then you know where you're going to end up. So if you want to receive Christ as your Savior and Lord, please pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I heard the message today and it struck my heart. Now I realize that death is certain and we all die. The unrighteous and the righteous die. But they go to two different places. Spiritually, the soul goes to two different places. The body goes into the ground, but the soul goes to either torment or paradise. My beloved, it is so important that you receive Jesus Christ. So please pray this prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, I received the message today. I believe that if I should die, being in this unrighteous state, I would go to torment and then to the lake of fire. And I don't want to go to this horrible place. So I pray, Father God, that you save me today. I believe that your son, Jesus Christ, is the Savior of all mankind. He is the only way to heaven and only through him and accepting his sacrificial death on Calvary's hill can I go to heaven. I believe that he was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and ascended into heaven. I believe that today. And I believe that he is now sitting at the right hand of God the Father in a place of power and majesty from where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. I believe that today. I confess that today. And according to your word, you said if we confess this, confess with our mouth, and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved. And that is saved from torment, saved from the lake of fire. And I believe that today. And I believe that through my true repentance and my belief in Jesus Christ, I have become a Christian. And I thank you for Jesus Christ becoming my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for me, that I may go to heaven. And now I know that I can call on you at any time, and that when I die, I will be with you forever. And I pray today in your precious name. Amen.
My beloved, if you truly repent, let me be the first to welcome you into the kingdom of God. Now, what I want you to do is go to a Bible preaching teaching church. This is so very important. Get an audience with a pastor. And this church must be one that preaches the truth, the whole truth, from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation. Tell the minister, the pastor, or the elder what happened. Ask them to pray with you, to pray for you, to anoint you with oil, and to baptize you in water by full immersion in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ask them to mentor you, to teach you, so you may go out and reach others as you grow in the grace of our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, as you grow in your faith and your knowledge in Jesus Christ. Then what I would like you to do is contact me by email at abundant.grace at att.net. You can also contact us through our website at www.abundantgracechurch.net or through our other website at www.abundantgraceofmidlothian.com. Or you just Google me. Google my name, Bishop Ramon de Maria. Thank you, my beloved. And let me say God bless all of you that came into the kingdom by receiving Christ as your Savior and Lord. And those of you that didn't, please give strong thought to becoming a Christian today. Because tomorrow isn't promised to you. The next minute isn't promised to you. So please, think about receiving Christ as your Savior and Lord. God bless you, my beloved. And don't forget, next week we will do part three. So, make sure you tune in. God bless you, and go with God.